understand English. No? Perfect. Because I submitted this talk in English, first time in the Drupal Camp Anonia. And today you will see the last of its kind. Because in August, June 3rd, there will be another Drupal Camp Anonia. And then it will no longer be called community engagement, pushing the market contribution funnel or community engagement. We have a problem. Then it will be called community engagement. The story continues, so it will be, have, will be completely rewritten with uh, current findings and it will start over again to be prepared for Drupal. Okay. So. Is that working? Yeah. Should be working. There we go. Right. Ah, this is me. My name is Floris van Geel. And you can find me on RC under Zelfje, which is like an old elf from an old tale from a Dutch uh, Harry and Jekkers uh, folklore. <laughs> it's also my nickname in uh, the, the drupal.slack.com, whenever you can still read something that's written like yesterday. And uh, on the Twitter you can find me at also Olaf and Drupal Chat under just floors. The name space was available. I have a company which is like a very short introduction. And it's called Over Olaf since it's in Eindhoven, which the area code is over all, meaning that if you start a German branch office, it should go to Hamburg, because it also has over all. I call myself a Drupal entrepreneur, which means that I make cool things with Drupal, uh, about 60% solving minimal viable and uh, proof of concept client problems, and 40% invest my time into own products, real cool stuff. The slides can be found here, Google Gen Excel slash index HTML, because it's put in a folder on top of Drupal, so the index isn't covered in my VHost. Um, so at the end you will get the slides back, so you, if you want to take a picture, you can take this one for the end, there's a Q&A. So today we're going to talk about the issue that we have at hand as a community. Then some initiatives that came there that helped to fix this issue. And then I'm going to tell you really, really quickly about marketing. Then about marketing automation and its recent developments. Then a new project that includes that. It's about a headless Drupal-based CRM. It's really interesting. And I look with the closure so we can all go for the next session or drinks. Drinks, perfect. Yeah, so I'll take it. Not too long. Okay, <laughs> who knows this fellow again? I don't know. Who, who does it? You know? Yes, it's short. This is Dries Beithart. And this was in DrupalCon Nashville. And in DrupalCon Nashville, Dries did a great thing. He announced the Drupal Marketing Initiative. So, this is the initiative. Um, a lot of people collected money, a lot of companies, like over 100,000 dollars. And with that money, the initiative was born, which means that it has a Drupal board page and has a uh, dedicated person, Rebecca Kitcher, who is paid for this. She's really good in following up emails and uh, also in Slack and in Twitter, just to have this going. So, this initiative consists of four phases, and two of the four phases are covered by the funds. First one, which is done, Paul Johnson and his team worked really, really hard to make a universal pitch deck for all of us. And I would emphasize you and encourage you to translate it to your local language, add your UK use cases, and give it back to the community again. So together we can engage more people in want to have uh, Drupal. I'm missing one slide. The problem statement. Yes. At the same uh, DrupalCon, usually we get in a room at a buff where we say, okay, we need to grow this pie, we need to grow this community. And I look around the room, and in general, see the same faces. Only each and every one of us got one year older. In my opinion, this is a problem. If we don't fix that, we don't get much more external, new, young blood, as well as people who want to change career opportunity 
or when he, they're just interested in developing websites and keep on growing our community, we will be, well not perish, but we will have big issues in 10 years. Because some of us who walk around here, we see for 10 years, they go, might if you go to pension, and other ones from maybe hot from Drupal to Symphony or to something else. It always happens all the time. So in order to keep our community sustainable and healthy, we need to get more people in. So I was talking about this uh, initiative. And after the first phase, the second phase is to provide marketing and sales materials to everyone to use. Um, I guess that if you are in sales or you are a company owner, you have your own pitch decks. And the trick is to abstract that. That's also why I'm so fond and so happy that we had yesterday the Splash Awards. Because every case from the Splash Awards delivers a fully extended use case of how great the website was built by the agency, how happy the customers were with that, with descriptions, with videos, with more materials. And these materials can go directly as a showcase on Drupal.org, as well as as a showcase So, the third phase, which is not covered by the funds, probably if the community takes up this and collaborates, uh, we get uh, coordinated PR campaigns. This is already happening uh, for the Dutch uh, Drupal uh, Association Foundation. We have one dedicated marketing person, she was here yesterday, and for part-time. The Germans also have one, and the Belgians are thinking to have one or two as well. And if these marketing people collaborate for engaging people within our local community. We can also extend that across Europe. So there's big opportunities by collaboration in order to have more and more. The last one is, in my opinion, really, really important and should also be covered by the grant because it's just a matter of materials. So besides use cases and having the pitch deck, it would be great to have like a marketing campaign in a box where you have flyers and leaflets and all kinds of other uh, needed promotional materials in order to engage more customers within Drupal. Since with more customers, we get more Drupal buy, we get more people, and we continue to grow prosper. So, to help this forward, you can go to this, this webpage here, Moving Promote Drupal Initiative. It's just the second link after Promote Drupal. There's also an issue cube on it. It's not that full yet. If you have good ideas, we can pitch them inside the issue queue, like we used to. Already discussed Rebecca. And then I bring it to the next initiative that I recently joined, out of frustration. It's called the Drupal Event Organizers Initiative. It's not yet a fully initiative, but it's getting to be. Currently, it's in a norming storming phase. So groups are defined, scopes are getting defined. The whole back idea is to have like one central place where we register events so we don't have a collision on the same day with local events as well as plan around nicely for DrupalCon and so on and still have one central place to collect data about what we're doing for the community by organizing the event. And I specifically joined because I was the only non-American. Uh, the whole group there was like, it was initiated by Rachel. Great work for the community, but all Americans were there. So I thought, okay, let's see what happens and join up. And I encouraged uh, the submission from Delhi, and the person there to join up, and some from Africa. So now we're getting more diverse over the whole world in order to abstract, collect data, make uh, the differentiation that we have with camp organizing. In here, we are in the comfort zone. We're doing a 400 people camp which usually have 50, 60, 70, maybe 1,000 euros budget. If you go over that, it's a complete different league. It takes much more people, much more effort, much more professionalization in order to cope with it and to make something like we did last year in September. However, we come from a very small scale. There is local meetups, local camps, and in my opinion, it would be great in order to have these kinds of streaming boxes you see here, and then, if you have a local meetup, stream that to next door. Stream that to Africa and back again. So we can also enjoy each other's progress and help each other out with talks and new ideas. So the call to action here 
is you can get involved. There is like a Slack, yet another service. Not, not a single group, not something in Google Chat. No, no, special Slack for that. And there's a monthly meetup on Zoom, and there's a newsletter, and yet again, an issue queue. So that's the easiest thing to do. If you have a good idea, pitch it in the issue queue, and it will be followed up. So now we come to marketing. Marketing is not really that big, not, not really that difficult. It's all about communication. It has nothing to do actually with sales. Only about saying what you do and doing what you say. For example, my name is Roars and I like cooking since I like really, really good meals. So how does this look? Imagine I have like a nice course shop and I'm selling shoes. Clean white shoes. So there is a funnel that the visitor comes to, at the start, they're unknown. Then they visit the web page, either through Google, or through a link, through a friend, or whatever. Then they might get some interest, so they get to be a prospect. Prospect leads to a lead. Then there's an opportunity in order to buy this new shoe. And then we have a happy customer who is no longer feeding. If you compare this kind of a funnel, this kind of a funnel between a shop and between a website like Drupal or a community, we see the last four bits changing. So first, the person is unknown, knows something about the software, gets to Drupal or, and is starting to be the so-called leecher. That's a word from the 90s. You take the stuff and you use it and you don't use it. From there, the incentive that we're all looking for is to have this person registered to Google the org account. So we, they can participate in the issue queue and they can contribute. Then, when visiting a local uh, camp like this, or a meetup, or even a Google Con, people get engaged and they see the greatness about this community and they get involved. And then, finally, people start to be active contributors. I'm deliberately using the word contribution, since it's not just code, it's all about everything that we need in order to make the project better and bigger. It's not just marketing, also translations, also organizing camps, uh, doing other community work, which helps us to grow. So how does this look like? For example, shoes or even with uh, the example of Google Or. Every time you go to the next phase in the funnel, 10% is left out. So let's say 10,000 people are aware, 10% of those, 1,000, they get to be interested. 100 decide to do something, and even only 10 act without making a decision and register and just go with it. Meanwhile, in the other layers, people let it sink by, and maybe come back later and be again part of the last 10% that act now. to Drupal.org or Drupal.nl or other uh, community platforms that we have, how can we engage our visitors to become happy contributors? So we're tweaking these funnels. One of the main things that I would envision is to have something like this. Imagine I'm happy the shoe sale company site and I'm visiting the Drupal Commerce website since I use commerce in order to sell my shoes. And I have some questions. What if there would be like a nice chat box in the bottom right corner that I could just put my question in that would be linked to a web service where all the people are collaborating upon uh, giving Drupal Commerce its support, maybe a separate development channel would be great for developers, but I could directly get an answer to my question. If I do so and I'm happy, I end such a chat with a little box where I say, oh yeah, thank you, I'm really happy, I put me at my domain, and then it ends up with a nice piece of JSON. This is part already of RocketJet, which is an uh, open source service which provides real-time chat and many integrations, I will tell you a little bit more about that later. 
Uh, but this kind of a little JSON can be easily consumed by a CRM or by another engagement platform like Multitap. We touch upon later. For Drupal.org, we made a rocket chat module which facilitated this little chat box in a one to one live chat environment. And for Drupal 8, it also covers a full fledged API, which means that all the functions that are even in the latest version of Rocket Chat, just by wrapping them in a PHP function, are available to you as a developer in Drupal. Uh, the next phase, which just got initiated by working together with Open Social, is to have a garden group. You could go directly be linked to a chat channel in Rocket Chat and actually do the stuff that I just envisioned that should be done. So, RocketChat is built upon Meteor, which is a JavaScript, Node.js-like language. It runs on a MongoDB database cluster. And Genix is used in order to proxy it really, really fast. Of course, let's encrypt or another kind of certificate is needed in order to have a secure communication between the client and the server. And if you want to play with it, there's easy installments by, for example, Docker, which you can just download and deploy in your local Docker playground and start playing with it. There's a very good extended Ansible script in order to deploy it in, within whatever hosting environment that you want to use. We do this in LXC, LXD, Linux containers uh, due to low overhead and uh, our experience with using that. Another thing which is a really main part of it is in the top right we see there is a little Qbot. And Qbot is an open source bot with whom you can program or download and install automation of tasks. So you imagine that you're answering the same question over and over again. You can just make it into an auto-response by the bot. Or imagine that you have like options that people have to click on for marketing. You can check which option is required for what question and indeed in the end start automating the marketing people itself. It's already done for the banking, that people in the banking uh, industry, they were behaving like computers, and they were really amazed that they were replaced by computers. The same thing will happen again in many industries in the near future. So, in order to have a thing like Rocket Chat communicate and be authenticated and be secure with a Drupal, you need two things. You need to have OAuth 2, which makes authentication, which means you can come in, but I don't know who you are, but I know that you can go in. And you have OpenID Connect, which is built upon the old OpenID, which was a combination of both. Now they separated it, which is all about identification. So if I visit a uh, Drupal Jam and now, I want to share my t shirt size because I like blue t shirts, and I hope next year we'll have blue t shirts. And I will say, okay, my meal preference is I eat everything with pork and whatever you need to share, maybe my company name to bring from the batch and my real name, which should be enough. So by choosing and by allowing, you see this when you open an app, for example, uh, Walk2 and Open Internet are used by Google and Facebook for authenticating all the apps. And they also help develop the standard, adapt the standard. So it's one of the most widely used standards. So if I go to an app and I say, okay, I want to delegate my information, and it asks explicitly, do you want to allow this app to use your t-shirt size? Yes, please, because I have a t-shirt, done. The same thing is in the process with an endless long issue queue on Drupal.org in order to be facilitated at Drupal.org. Which means that when organizing a camp here, we could make a differentiation. Not if you're what kind of visitor type you are or whatever, that's not interesting. You want to know as an organizer or as an uh, operator of a service, is a person, does it have, does she, he, she or it have a Drupal.org account or not? Because that takes a different approach. People who don't know, uh, don't have a Drupal.org account, they should create one. After, one of us, one of the peers, should validate the account in order for the person to contribute. Plus, the person needs a lot of information in order to know how we do this. So, having this in place.
this is, is really important and the testing framework is there and hopefully that within, I would say hopefully before DrupalCon, but probably a little bit later, it will be. So now you come down to marketing automation. What is that marketing automation? Oh, that's really nice. Let's take it. Okay. Marketing automation helps you save time by handling marketing and sales tasks on a predefined schedule and by gathering critical and useful information into, into a certain location to help sales teams focus on the right potential customers and leads at the right time. So in fact, it helps to get a little more information about the person and makes the effort of answering all the emails and doing all the engagements into a seamless solution. Multic is the only available free open source software that can do that. And it's pretty good in, in lead nurturing and tracking. So it's a little tracking pixel that we put obviously in our own first party namespace. So you don't need to have too much consent in order to track people. It has the ability to do drip flows. So not spam everybody at the same time, but see, okay, uh, I saw that Derek opened the mail last week, so I won't bother him with the same information. Rather, I get to learn more about Dirk, what Dirk's needs are and feed him the information that he's willing to read. It supports landing pages, so you even get rid of all these silly web forms. You just embed the form directly from Maltic in our environments and directly get the call to action from the user, collect the email, whatever that you need, fill it in, done. Plus, it has a real wide integration with social media. Then we come to the next phase of this, you need to monitor the teams, you need to monitor people. At start, people are things. They are a certain IP number visiting a certain page. You don't know more, you don't know less. And for uh, GDPR purposes, you even need to take these logs and keep them for five years. And slowly you are about, with consent, able to find out who is this person? What is this person doing here? What pages does the person visit? What are their needs? What are their desires? What software parts are they interested in? Where do they contribute? Where do they come up, commit, etc. etc. So it helps in order to track and to provide people with the needed information. There are two specific types of lead details, like I said before, the anonymous person, that's an IP number, and the known person. The best type of known person is of course a login user. We can send what information is shared, but there's a whole big different chain in between where you get to go to get, get to get to know more and more about the person. And Mountain also works with points, which is a very interesting thing since you can make your decisions based upon points. For example, if the person hits the same page twice, didn't find the manual, the, the, the read, sorry, the help part, which is, which is called the Google Org, you could make a little pop up, see you come back, nice, maybe you want to know more, what did I help? Because people don't read the site here and see that it helps, has helped, and certainly not that important that you can just look into the Git repository, what's the actual code. So with these points, you can make this, these kinds of schemas. This one is, for example, for uh, opening and following of emails. So if, if the person doesn't follow up the email, you can send a reminder after two weeks. If the person did follow up the email, you can know that the person is interested in a certain topic. Thus, you can send other information related to the topic and not spam people, but help people. Another great asset about uh, Multic is that it has a big landscape of plugins, which means that I don't have to integrate MailChimp or Salesforce or whatever uh, super CRM tools of PA, Zoho services that my clients need within Drupal because I only need to integrate Multic with Drupal and then it's already done. Um, Recently, been a 
acquired by Aqua, which in my opinion is amazing news because uh, I've been playing around with Mod for one and a half years, uh, invited uh, D.B. Hurley, the founder of Mod, to come to Google Europe in order to have cross uh, open source uh, collaboration that all worked well. However, Mantic had the same issue as that we had going from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. There was no progress. Um, anybody forgot to start working on Mantic 3. And developers wanted to have like, the newest tools to play with. So now that Akia bought it, there is a big opportunity for both communities to start collaborating and to learn from each other and keep on combining both the strengths of both open sources. And for your Drupal integration, there is already a great module uh, on Drupal.org for Drupal 8, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure if that's that. It's not that hard to integrate the pixel into the forums in, in 7. And that's made by OneX Internet, and yes, yeah, just downloading the module and creating the books, installing. Pretty straightforward to go with it. So now we have a website, we can authenticate, we can do real-time chat, we have a multi-channel engagement marketing automation platform. A lot of bullshit bingo here in a, in a row, but I hope it's clear. So what's the component which is missing? Customer relation management. Yes, the old Rolodex. We all know this from LinkedIn, where you have all your contacts on the cards are spread. They're all in your LinkedIn, and then you want to get some useful ones out of this data. If we look at uh, Drupal.org landscape, there is CRM, Core, Agile, Airfall, and all these kinds of very buffed up distributions, uh, mainly built around Drupal 7. And they're either really, really basic proof of concepts or utterly complex. So that means that if I would use it, I would pull my hair and lose my ponytail and turn ball. Currently in the open source landscape there are two ready-made products to be used. Uh, there is a uh, Sweet CRM, which is a fork of Super CRM, since Super CRM changed its license to be payware and not for open sourceware. So that's an option. And the other option is CV CRM, which is in fact Drupal with its own separate database for the CRAM part, and then it's all hooked together, and it's really interesting to update, update and upgrade that one. Mm -hmm. But if it's good enough for the Drupal Association to be used now, it can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. Man, mm, doesn't convince me. So we were debating about that also in Pannonia, and we came up like, we're going to do it again. But we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again right, and we're going to so we came up with a new idea to have Amuba CRM. Amuba is this little uh, multicellular organism that is very flexible, very adaptable, and eats little bits of food, in this case, information. And the idea with this is to create the first complete uh, headless CRM API driven based on Drupal. Um, this initiated in Caronia last year, and then the Swedish company Upal put some money, and then the Ninja Coders in uh, Romania, they started Ninja Coding, and now we have the first proof of concept in there. This first proof of concept can do the most stupid things which are needed. Since most of the SMB corporate worlds, small medium business, they work with Excel. <coughs> Each person is responsible for one column to take track of the data, and if you have the proper headings, it can just eat the data and consume them. It has an integration to import stuff from uh, Salesforce, it has the integration to import from Sweet CRM, because in the market that I'm seeing, these are the main two CRM softwares which are used. This one is paid for, this one is open source. However, by means of hosting, people usually pay an integrator to have their suite here. One of the main assets that I was pushing for is to have a full-fledged integration with Monty. The 
if you have an engagement in Mavic, it automatically gets synchronized by means of cron and by means of the rules to the Army bus CRM and vice versa. Because there's nothing more irritating than typing over or exporting, importing context all the time. You want to have that seamlessly and you want to have it based upon rules. So this plugin, this last bit, that's a plugin for Mavic. <coughs> And uh, yeah, with the rules, you can just choose if a person has this amount of points and has this amount of value, then it goes to Amoeba CRM. Amoeba CRM currently is like a rock line. So expect uh, when you install it to yeah, it works in Garland. It's not that pretty, hmm. but it has one really important asset is that you have entity drag and drop for sorting your Kanban. There was an issue with Kanban, uh, which is a module of Google Core, that it works very good on Node, but only on Node. And we made two entities, two entity types. We have a company entity type to collect uh, contacts, and we have a contact entity type. And to keep things simple, we gave the contact entity type all the fields which are in So if you have to buy invent the wheel and have issues with synchronization, well, you can just copy it. So now when I take this one and I drag it to another uh, vertical Kanban, it will be automatically updated and in the first state when they're imported, all the contacts are unpublished and when they change state they get to be published. Uh, these little uh, tags that we see on the top were exactly the same as we saw in the funnel, however they're made by taxonomy. So if your company or your client wants to have different labels, we punch them, we drag them, and you have your Kanban board in place. For us, for developer, the next phase is to have sort of a dashboard where for every contact we can see who engaged the contact with what information, what phone call, and what's the status of the contact. Is it red? Is it not happy? Is it green? Yes, happy. Is it blue or another color? Then more engagement has to be taken into account with the customer or the client. So now we have a nice trio. We have Amula CRM, Drupal, Mavic. However, this thing here doesn't necessarily have to be Drupal. It can also be Joomla, or WordPress, or Magento, or whatever. Hmm? Okay. So if you abstract that, it can be like these kinds of CMSs, it can be apps, it can be just HTML, or whatever thing that is on the web. On there, you can just inject JavaScript. You have real-time integration with Rocket Chat. You have Live Chat. On the top part, you take your statistics, like FOMO, which the thing is usually it was called uh, previously it was called Kiwik, but now it's Kiwik. Now it's renamed to FOMO. And yeah, I really like it. It's Google Analytics with your own data within your own domain space. So really, really good. Mavic. And that's not really integrated with Google CRM. Hopefully soon the live chat is already integrated with Drupal, so Google CRM, which is don't follow Drupal. So this is about the stage we are at now, and from here uh, I'd like to see more input, more options. Uh, we did a workshop at Drupal Developer Days in order to get more engagement. We'll do another workshop in Drupal Canonia. I even proposed a training for DrupalCon, but I'm not sure if they take it. We'll see. So now we come to marketing and marketeers. Marketeers are just people. Don't be afraid of them. They have to report on the progress and they have to meet certain targets, key KPIs, key performance indicators. Very simple, just how many clients got in, get the sale. So, find out what these important parts, KPIs, are for the marketeers. Make reporting initiative pretty, good UX, work together with your designers and frontenders. Perfect. Don't do what I did, did before. Just deploy Google Analytics. I'm done with that. Because then it won't bring results and it won't bring action. By doing this and by using this marketing automation and chat and everything, the question to my customers is not just do you want to buy, buy a website? No, it is. Do you like to have more or less customers? 
Usually the answer is yes, please give me more customers. So if we take this idea, this model, and deploy it within our community infrastructure, we can make our community grow again. So I would gladly invite you to join Drupal Camp Pannonia, which is like 2 and 3rd August in Serbia. It's very pretty near Lille and pretty well reachable. If not, if you want to stay close by home, then we have this one. DrupalCon Amsterdam, which would be 28, 31 October. It's just hidden behind my little view screen. And so, also invite you to join us, not online, but today will be a little bit short because we're going to sprint a little bit different now. Uh, but find the issue queue, which is in the Q&A section here. Here, again, we have the links so you can find all the links and all the issues and everything. So now you might have two more minutes for questions. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Uh, sorry, let me give you a for the for my lecture. service within their Drupal stacks and it will try to cherish and flourish as well as hopefully us uh, the combination of both communities. So I guess that it will remain open source definitely and I hope that both communities will prosper and collaborate more and more than it's already done. That, that, that looks really interesting so it would be uh, very bad if it might yeah. be and the, the great thing is, it is pretty accessible to us Drupal developers, or it's uh, also uh, PHP Laravel based. So not that, just a little dialect difference. Any other questions? Find me if you have any suggestions, questions, want to test something, etc. Thank you.